Okay, just want to show you where I'm at with this mandolin. It's not a lute, it is a mandolin. It's a bowl back mandolin. I'm just learning about this. I, don't, I didn't know too much about this, obviously, at all. But um, I don't I don't think this is original. The pickup, somebody put this in there. It was definitely done a long time ago. Um, and it's got three cracks on the top that I'm hoping to figure out a way to make those a little less unsightly, tighten them up. The wood's warped quite a bit. So I did humidify it to give it a little bit of, um, just kind of soften up the wood a little bit. Hopefully I can move it. Because when I first got it, it was brittle. It felt like it was going to snap. Now it's got a little bit of flexibility in, in the top. So I just have to figure out how to clamp it because this sound hole is so small. I don't know if I have a clamp small enough to get in there. I'm hoping I do, but I'm gonna take off this pickup and uh, see if I can get into the inside. I'll be right back. I was just looking at this, um, the sound hole being so small, trying to get a clamp in there to get all the way back here and try, I don't know, you'd have to put cleats. This is so far separated, it, it won't hold just gluing it and clamping it. So to get cleats in there, you know, I watched guys do uh, that fix violins and um, they always take the top off to get inside it to fix any cracks. Um, and this is separated back here so this would be a good starting point if i could get up the nerve to do it but i think i might go for it <clears throat> i'll take off the electronics unscrew that and then just start trying to work a blade into here this thing's got to be so the glue's got to be very dry and brittle it, it might just come right off um as far as the fingerboard, I don't know if I'm going to heat that up. I might heat this part up to try to release that, but I want to try and work it off in the back first. If I can work my way around to the fingerboard, then I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. But I'll be right back when I get started on this. Okay, I'm just trying to... I'm just heating up this blade on this iron. Probably the wrong blade to use, but the only thing that I have that's small enough that's not so flexible try to bust through this thing. I thought I just found a spot. Okay, there we go. Should probably try and remove the binding first. Split right there. Where was the starting point? Get one spot where it goes in. The reason there's such weird lighting is I have this heat lamp going. Try and warm, keep this, kind of warm it up a little bit. Just kind of warm up the area too. Get some more heat on my blade. score this line first let's be super careful just go right through the finish only not that it's really worth it to do that on this instrument i don't think it's an expensive instrument i didn't pay hardly anything for it i'm trying to Bring it back to life. We'll see how this goes. This binding is going to be so brittle. I hope it doesn't just crack right off.
gonna use that iron right now. Kill this light. Okay, almost got it. I'm just down to the end now. Just wanted to show you the last little bit. I don't think the binding goes under the, uh, it might though. It might go under and I'm just gonna leave it right there. I'm just gonna leave it attached. Maybe I'll just tape it in place while I'm trying to remove the back and the other side. Okay, I'm gonna get started on that. I'll be back when I show you something interesting. I'm trying to work on this other side. I did get a little split right there. And I got, I got the bottom scored and I'm just working it along. It seems to be going fine. Just broke that one piece and I pulled a little bit of the, uh, um, this kind of decorative binding right there. You can see, pulled it with it, but that's okay. I think when I glue that all back together, you won't even know. So I'll be back. I've got my iron back on. I'm heating up the tip of this blade. I got the purfling, not the purfling, the binding all disconnected. I got this side over here taped, taped down so it doesn't get messed up. I took off a section here. I got a couple of pieces of the binding, the wood, the wood section, which came off in one piece. So I should be able to glue that back on without it um, even being detectable. But now I just want to work a blade around, try to get this top loosened. Another thought I had is if I can get, if I can get it loose from the body and I can get some clamps in here from this side, on the back side here, I might be able to fix this. I may not have to completely detach it over here and take it completely off. Let me see if I can loosen up this glue a little bit. It stopped right at, there's a little crack right there and I don't wanna feel like if I force it, it'll cr the, the top will split. Another crack will open up. Got to get in there somehow and do a little surgery on this. Separation surgery. Top's got some separation anxiety going on. Oh God, I can see it going. This is right, at, it's a bad spot here. I'm gonna try and do the best I can here. That's all I can do. I might be kicking myself later that I even I'm going down this road, but let's see what happens. Either way, I'll get this thing up and running one day. Oh God, it's so tight right there. Let me see if I can get another spot started. Anyway, I'm gonna keep picking at this. I'll come back at you when I got something to show you. Just going around this with two knives, using one as a wedge behind, and just trying to get this thing to open up. Trying to crack this beetle, this bug. Oh, there's a brace here somewhere, right here. I'm just gonna leave that right there. Probably another brace. There's two of them right here, and two, is that this one, that's the third one, one, two, one, it's right about, yeah, that's one, and then there's another one right here, so you kind of try and jump around that one. Okay, so I got the top loose to about here or so, I can definitely get into this area here. I'm just working out. Looks like they put like filler down in this crack. So I'm gonna get all that out of there, clean it all out. See if I can line these up. I think at this stage, I can work with these cracks and even open this up back here enough.
possibly work some cleats in there. Maybe with, uh, I don't know, some string. Pull it up this way. Or at least I can see what I'm doing. I can get a piece under here and somehow get a clamp on this. Hold it. If I can line it up, then I can put it back together and these cracks will be, um, at least they'll be solid and somewhat flush. That's what I'm going for and put it all back together. That's about where I'm at right now. I'm gonna keep working at it. I'm gonna keep work picking at this filler in here. I'll be back when I got something else to show ya. Okay, I've been working on this mandolin situation with the top and the cracks. And what I've come up with, give it some thought, it's been a couple of days. Um, the top being so uneven. And I removed it from the body somewhat. I got it to about there. And, you know, all the way around so I can at least get something underneath it. I can put a, um, some cleats on some of these cracks. I can get some, work some cleats in there. Uh, it's got three major cracks here. So this one, you can see the, um, the binding here, the top piece broke. I should be able to put that back together, glue that down. And there is some room I can see if I clamp this, if I put a little pressure this way, moving this way, squeezing, I can close up this one. But this, this crack here in the middle, it's too wide and it's attached back here. So I can't really squeeze it to get that together. So what I'm gonna do is if I just put super glue down in there, it's gonna just go right through it and drip. I have these clamps here that's putting pressure down on this side because this side was high and this side was low. I have this, this shim in here to keep this above that. So I have this clamp attached to my bench. I got a little foam underneath it with a hole cut out to accept the bowl. And I got the neck held in place. I got a little shim back here because my clamp won't go far enough. I should be clamping it right around here, but I have a clamp back here and then I have a shim or like a wedge here to put a little more pressure here. But right now it's nice and even, the two surfaces. So I'm gonna make a slurry with, um, I was gonna put a splint in there, but the um, it's not a perfect opening. I think I can get away with putting some sawdust, maybe some maple dust, and super glue, and fill that, and get this to close and hold, and um, then I'll put some cleats on the back to hold it from opening up in the future. That should do it. I'm gonna give it a shot, see how that goes. Wish me luck, I'll be back. All right, so I have some sawdust here got some maple sandings. I'm gonna start filling in this crack. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but I'm packing it down in there in hopes that it's gonna just hang on with friction crack. I'm sure some of it will drop down into the body, but if I can build up a layer. Okay, so now I've got the crack filled. Just have it kind of packed down in there. I'm just trying to keep it where the crack is. I don't want to have it going all over the place. And I want to try to keep the glue away from going underneath any of this wood. I should have probably put some wax paper or something, but I'm going to try and tip it. I really can't. I'm just going to, I'm just going to go for it. It's going to put very little glue, put little drops every so often. Let it wick down in there.
can see the glue going right down in that crack. Hopefully it's got enough sawdust to hold. You might have to do this a couple of times. Trying to get some extra little sawdust down in there. You can see I need some more right here. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry really good. And then I should be able to, at that point, unclamp it, see if it holds. And then I can start working it. I can get the other ones, once I get the other ones filled, then I'll finish it all at the same time. So I'll be right back. Okay, I've given the glue some time to dry and set up. This is going to be the moment of truth when I release this clamp. Because there's quite a bit of, you know, pressure on this to keep it even with these clamps. When I release it, we'll see if the wood holds. Not the wood. The repair, the glue. It's going to go easy with this. sign. Now look at that. One piece. Cool. There you have it. Step one in this process. Looks kind of ugly right now, but at least the two sides are lined up. Now I'll work on these outer ones. I'll be right back. So what I've come up with for this crack here, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna tack it in the center with some super glue. And then, this, if I, if I hold it together with my fingers, I could glue the whole thing that way and just hold it. 30 seconds a minute and then it'll be dry but it's a little uneven over here uh, I don't know if I can get something under here to maybe maybe I can do that Put a little pressure I get a little something right here aha aha now when I squeeze it together just like that that's pretty even. All right, let me get some glue down in there and here we go. I don't know where to start. <laughs> um, 
I want to start at this end for some reason. Try to not to get this glue to run down on the finish. Let me flatten this out a little bit. Still pretty even right there. I gotta go kind of quick because this glue will set up quick. Let me do this half first. Where's my accelerator when I need it? Nothing like watching glue dry. Riveting. I don't know if that's gonna hold. I might need my accelerator. When you want it to dry, it doesn't. I don't even know if this is gonna work. I mean, it seems like the glue is trying to grab it. Ah. I think that's it. Let me do the rest of it. This is all pretty even. It's not bad. There's a crack, I think, right here. Though. Should put a little glue down in there and at least seal that up. It's not uneven or anything, it's just a little tear right in the center. going right down in there. Now this one, this is a couple of them. I screwed this. Take a look at this here. This one I have to kind of mess with a little bit because the, the binding part on the top is broken. So I gotta think about whether I wanna fix that first and then do the crack 
or squeeze the crack together and try to piece together this binding. I may have to fill this. I think I have to fix this outside first, get this tight, and then I can... Yeah, it does look like it has a little room to squeeze. All right, let me mess with this a little bit off camera. I'll come back with something for you. Okay, this one, I got the binding lined up here. And if I put a little wedge right here, just give it a little up pressure on this side. I can push right about here. A little less. Push right here. Maybe I'll get a clamp right there. And now it's nice and flat. I can do a little fill on that. Probably get this side at the same time. Maybe not. I'll do this one first though. Get this lined up. So let me get a clamp on this. I'll be right back. Now you can see how I have this same same deal as the, the big crack in the middle. A little wedge on this side to put a little up pressure on this panel. And then a little down pressure. Now I got it nice and even. I'm going to go ahead and fill this crack again. Same deal. Sawdust. Try to get it to get locked in there. It's pretty wide. Really wide. So let me show you where I am with this mandolin and the cracks that are now completely sealed up. But I want to get some cleats on the inside behind it. And the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to use these. It's a little guitar tuner mounted to this little jig. I got a little cork on the back. This is going to sit right like so. And I'm going to run guitar string, like a e, high E string. I'm going to take these little cleats. I'm going to drill a hole right in the center. I'm going to mark one side of it that is going to face towards this because I, I have an opening in the top of the mandolin so I can see inside because I need to position these cleats so the grain on the cleat goes perpendicular or 45 to the grain on the spruce on the top of this mandolin. So in order to line it up, once I pull the cleat up through the string and get it into position, um, I can spin it and position it from the side and using the red line as an indicator. So that probably makes no sense right now, but I will show you what I'm gonna do. Hold on, when I get set up, I'll show you what's happening. Be right back. I'm going to show you how I have the cleat. The grain is moving this way, in this direction. So I have on the back side, I have a little red mark. I need to drill a hole in this. I just have a little hand drill like this. Not a hand drill, it goes into a chuck and it's just a collet, holds the drill, but I don't need to put it in a drill. I'm just have a little piece of dull, double stake tape right here. Just have it setting there. I'm just going to turn it with my finger. It doesn't take much. The spruce is very thin. And that's it. We got a hole. So let me show you what I've done so far tying a knot in the end of this guitar string and I'm going to slide the cleat with the rounded beveled side away from the knot so when I pull this up through the hole I'm about to drill in here Actually, it's got to go the other way. It's got to go towards the knot. The knot's got to be pushing against the set that surface. So I've got two of them. 
and I'm gonna feed these through. I gotta drill two holes first in the top of this crack, right? I'm gonna put, I'm gonna space them out pretty evenly, right? One here, one there. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I should have a 30 second drill bit, but I've only got a 16th. This should work. A little bit big, but <laughs> I've got a lot of patching to do on this regardless. Got to do this pretty carefully. One. I want to get it right on the crack where it was. That's the whole point. There we go. Now, a little finagling. I'm going to get this up through there, wrap it around my jig. Now the way to get this in here and through the other side, I have to devise another little step. So let me get set up for that, I'll be right back. Okay, in second thought, I think I'm gonna have to uh, switch over to plan B on feeding this in because the sound hole is so small. Usually you can kind of feed your hand in there and fish it through. But in this case, I'm gonna have to go through the top and so I still have my knot on one side here, which I can use as a stop so it doesn't go through the hole, but I gotta feed the guitar string through the top, find it on the inside, and grab it with some long needle nose pliers. Okay. There it is. Oop, dropped it. Come on. There we go. Okay. Now, I'm going to take and tie another knot in this end. First put the cleat. Gotta make sure I go the right way with this. It's gonna feed through, it's gonna land right here. So this has to go flat side. Oh, I still have to get glue on this, but first, I think I'm doing that wrong. I think it's got to go this way. Which is the flat side against the top. So it's got to go into the sound hole, come up. That's right, okay. So I need to tie another knot on this end. Now it's not easy to tie a knot in this. You got to use some pliers. Okay, that's not going anywhere. Now, by pulling up on this, just take a peek in here. Okay, I'm gonna try to get a shot of this to show you what it looks like on the inside. I'll show you how this is gonna work. Okay, I'm going to show you this shot. I don't think it's going to be in focus, but you can see. So I'm pulling the string through the top. You can see the cleat. Let me just angle this, get the light in there. It's hard because I'm holding the camera and trying to do this at once. So there's the cleat. You can see the red spot. You can spin it into position. And it's going to sit right there on the back of the top. 
Okay, there she is. So, the string comes up around the tuner on the inside. See if I can get it to focus in there. There's the cleat. I'll add one more. Okay, I was able to get one on this crack. But not, I can't get another one in, in that hole. You can see, I put, try to put another one there. It's not gonna line up. So I'm gonna have to let these dry for a bit and then I'll come back and add one more. And then that should do it. I'll be back. Okay, let me show you my funky setup here. I was able to get all three at once. This one, because I don't really need the support to top to level it out or anything. I just used another one as like a little bridge to set it on, get some tension on it. Now I have all my cleats on the inside. Things lined up. Red marks are all in the front. So I know it's perpendicular. Can let these dry, take them off. We're good.